Okay. Okay. Uh, we are rolling. Order for good attendance. Bob Cunningham. Here. Anita is here. Yeah. Greg Hart is not. Steve House is not. Frank Hatchkiss is. Don Cage is not. Sheila Lodge is. Ken Oppenheimer is. Krista Fraser is. Michael Drury is. And Howard. With us. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. So um, while we're waiting for my office to bring over the summary memo, let me just run through uh, my notes of what happened last time. So we worked off of the exempt sign size regulations and starting at the top, you concluded that temporary construction signs in residential districts should be uh, should allow one additional six square foot sign during construction additional beyond what we've assumed so far to be a base allocation for everybody of a single size of of, of some specified size S single sign of some specified size for commercial uh, you allowed for two additional signs together totaling no more than 24 square feet. So uh, the size is consistent with uh, the, the current regulation, but you framed it as a, a specific number of additional signs. And remembering that although we're calling them construction, they would have any content uh, pending uh, uh, during the period of construction. Incidentally, uh, I am preparing a report on the how much room we have left after the Supreme Court case to treat commercial speech differently than we do non-commercial speech. So that'll come out to you as a report within the next few weeks. Do you need the spreadsheets? Do you have the uh, one? You have the one I from have last the spreadsheet okay, great. from last week. Uh, I do not have a printout of what you sent today. Uh, that's coming. Okay. Um, here's the agenda for you. Okay, so that's the first box. The second was balloons. Uh, after a lot of fairly painful debate, I think you concluded not to do anything about balloons. In other words, to allow uh, small balloons below 15 feet or the building ridge, roof ridge line, and as many as uh, 12. Okay, uh, next was non-commercial signs in a residential district. And really, this turned into a discussion of what the base allowance should be, what the minimum signage anyone in a residential area could have. And the committee concluded that you would allow one six square foot sign on a post no higher than six feet or on the outside of the building or in any street facing window. Didn't we also say that it could be more than one sign, but just so long as the square footage did not exceed what we have? I, uh, my notes show one, but if that's your pleasure, that's I easy to fix. One. One, all right, right. Now, the, that section of the code also deals with what, thank you, Leanna, I'm very sorry. Uh, I don't want you just to hand those, we'll take care of while you talk. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that the same section of the code deals with what it terms election signs. And you'll remember from early on that we can no longer regulate based on content. So the committee's pleasure was to allow as many as six additional signs of the same size and height and location during the period 90 days before and 10 days after any local, state, or national election. And an explanation for that number it was thought that that would be probably the maximum or maybe more for elections that had mayors, city council, whatever. And or, Ken, you can track what I'm saying off this memo. This memo yeah, should got it right here in front of you. Okay, very good, mm -hmm. very good. Ariel, it did I think you said minimum? Did you mean maximum? 
Did I say I meant no more than six yeah. additional signs? So uh, that would mean on a typical single family dwelling unit residential lot, you might see as many as seven signs 100 days of the year or more, depending how many elections there were. And uh, there was a lot of debate about how many. The concern being that some elections might include multiple ballot measures as well as <coughs> multiple candidates, both at the local, state, and federal level. And six seemed to be the compromise between permanent clutter and free speech on political matters, both of which are values that are important. I can't remember seeing more than four at most on any one large property, so I, I don't think that's really a problem. Okay. Next was... Uh, you, you said you prefer four? No, no, I, I don't, can't remember seeing oh. more than four. Yeah, well, that we were like, erring on the side of free speech here. So. Right. <coughs> Next was temporary real estate signs, and the committee took a fairly uh, tough position, if I can editorialize, saying that there would be no additional signage allowed for uh, real estate sales or leasing that the base residential single sign could be converted to real estate purposes during the period the property was marketed. But it could be two-faced. Could be two-faced, exactly. Double-faced. Chris, is the standard sign that you guys put up now, is that in excess of six square feet? And would, you know, oftentimes they've got a pole and maybe something else that's set on top of it. Would that additional one be considered a separate oh, sign, or is it all one sign? Sales or, or, you know, pending, yeah, pending or whatever. Pending, no. Would those be considered multiple signs, or is that all still one sign? That would be one sign as long as it fit within a two feet by three feet, six square feet. Right, so if the main sign is six square feet, they couldn't put any of the other little things on top of it, right? Right, the current regulation, though, is four square feet. Oh, so if the main sign is four square feet, then you'd have the ability to do that. Well, okay. I mean, the existing law says four, so six is an expansion of what the existing law allows okay. for those real estate signs. Yeah, and would it be on per street frontage, or is it just period? The the current, current regulation is, uh, one per street frontage. Mm -hmm. The committee did not address more for additional street frontages. Mm -hmm. okay. So you're thinking of the corner property? Yeah, the corner properties, um, just depending, we've, you know, we've always been allowed, you don't see them that often, but yeah, that's be really they're, property. yeah, there's certain properties that just need that given how they're, they're situated and where they are on the property and things like that. And so, um, having it on per street frontage is um, what what we've been doing and what the norm is. Although it's not used that often, every once in a while there's still that property that needs it. If it, if it are we debating this at the moment, this point, or yeah, let's talk about that. If it's visible from both street frontages, I don't know why it would be needed. Property is can be seen from both frontages. I would think just the sign on the street frontage that applied to the address would be sufficient. Krista, what we were trying to do is to be consistent throughout so there's no confusion. Right, Steve? That's kind of what we said on this. Let's keep it as simple as possible. As simple as possible. Now, uh, there's still the option that as long as you're within the six square feet, you could have two signs, one on each frontage. Oh, you could. Yeah. So you have that option. Do you, do you think this will be a big problem for realtors? Somebody's going to scream. I mean, I'm, I'm going to have someone who's angry about this just because, given how the property is located, or you know, perhaps there's you know a hedge on one side, and so they would put the sign on one side, but they'd have a different kind of sign maybe coming out from the hedge, or you know, something along those lines where you couldn't necessarily see the sign coming from one direction, but you could the other. So um, there, there is, there is that. Like I said, it's, it's not, 
it's not used a lot. Like we do not see it a lot at all, but there it is every once in a while those properties that are special and they need that. Ariel, set, setting aside what current practices, is the way that Krista has described this something that is allowed under the current rules or is that something that would not be allowed? The current rules allow <coughs> uh, one per street frontage, but they limit the content to uh, and that's the issue with the contract. Sale, rent, or lease, and they allow a double faced four square feet. So it's a somewhat smaller sign, but there can be two of them if there are uh, two street frontages. I mean, if you allowed a maximum a total of six and you currently could have four on each uh, street frontage, then three on each street frontage would comply with this new provision, and it would be not that much smaller. So you, you could have percent. one on each street front as long as you didn't exceed the total of six square feet. I mean, that's one way of looking at it. Or we can make it a little more complicated and say uh, on corner lots there could be one on each street frontage for a total of eight square feet or something. But the, the only challenge is uh, that the uh, these are con not content limited mm -hmm. and it's going to be impossible to enforce a limitation that yeah. says only when the property is for rent, lease, or sale. And can't so specify real estate. Well, I think, yeah. I mean, under those parameters, as long as there is a, it, multiple signs are allowed as the, and they don't exceed yeah. six square feet, I think you're good at that point, yeah. don't you think? Yeah. Well, and we have the opportunity for public input later, and so if there are a lot of voices that are upset with this, we'll hear about it and can consider it there. So as long as we're well, clear that we're not limiting it the number of signs, then we should be fine. Yeah. I would suggest putting a, uh, a, a cap because this is the base allowance. So it, I think you should say two or three. I, I, I wouldn't want to see 44 inch square <laughs> signs, right? So if you cap it uh, at two, not to exceed six, you, you get most of the way there. So you, you are going to lose that one yeah. side on the no, corner. No, but no, no. you wouldn't. So if you have, if you have one, if you have one three square foot sign and, and one three square foot well, sign, okay. one on each. You, you just have to reduce the size. Then you, yeah, you just reduce the size. <coughs> Is that accessible? Acceptable? Yeah. I think so. I'm just trying to remember what our sizes for our signs are, like the what the generic signs are. I mean, do you know if they generally comply with four yeah. square feet now? So yeah. They fit within that. So. Yeah. So that should be okay. We may we may request to um, bump it up to maybe eight square feet, just if the signs are four square feet each. I mean, we have twelve hundred realtors, like yeah, to have then, them. But if you do that, though, then anybody can put up an eight. Square yeah. Remember, you're not just affecting yeah. real estate. That's the problem. No, I mean, I get that. I'm just saying that, like, for this specific area, since it deals with... We can't, we can't like, control it by yeah. a specific area. So the, the committee's conclusion was simply to allow the six-square-foot base sign to be converted to whatever yeah. somebody wanted Use. to do for real estate. So if we broaden it, we're necessarily affecting the base allowance as well. Yeah. Okay. So let's not draw the head down. Are we agreed? Yes. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. I agree. Uh, the agenda. Thank you. This is uh, Don Kadish yeah. just arrived. Yeah. And that's yeah. this packet. And then uh, here is a, a memo I did summarizing the last yeah. meeting. And we're kind of working through that now. Okay, so are you okay with that? We've agreed to stay where we were. Stay yeah. where we are. Okay. Uh, for non-residential, there was uh, what looked like a fairly significant um, uh, reduction, if I remember correctly. And uh, yeah, the current non-residential is 12 square feet. And the committee opted to cut that to six square feet for commercial signage. Again, uh, placed on a six foot high pole or a street facing window of any height. 
So uh, that would affect the kind of State Street leasing signs uh, that exceed six square feet. So refresh our mind right here. What, what, give us an example of those. Okay, the current law allows 12 square feet in non-residential zones, six feet high. The proposed revision would cut that down to, yeah. cut it in half, yeah, down what to. What was the reason, rationale behind that? Uh, What'd you say, Ken? We're just asking for the rationale behind the cutting it in half. Uh, uh, ask your colleagues. I, I would say you don't need a bigger size for a commercial property. I mean, they've got some real yeah, big they're double the size of you have the six square feet, and they're often covering up architectural features. And, and well, yeah. but I guess my concern is, is to go back to our original uh, intent here. We were supposed to be taking the issues that were brought up because the constitutional question and changing the code to suffice. Now we're actually making changes that don't fall under that, as far as I'm concerned. That was my concern at the last meeting, but we're going there, so. Well, is that, I didn't understand that this was well, that, only the only issue that we were being addressed. So Ken is saying keep the same, basically, unless well, you were okay, well, some so specific speak. reason to change it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean, makes a good point. Well, to stay focused on the purpose of the committee's work, then we would stick with 12 square feet. Does anybody recall why we changed it last time? Well, I, I do. Uh, what I remember is that one of us said that if people are looking for commercial real estate, they're not going to be looking, you know, driving around looking at for signs. They they contact one of you people, right? And if they're looking for, you know, Sometimes. A commercial realtor. I mean, I don't. I think the signs are sort of um, Superfluous. irrelevant. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I would like to see it change, but I'm just a little unclear whether or not our objective That's, is to just yeah. deal with the right. First Amendment issues or to review the whole sign ordinance and make. I know, would agree with you. Adjustments. Well, yeah. If I could just interject one yeah. thing, though. Um, I, while I used to be in your profession as well, um, it is not always the case that people use realtors. And I don't think we can necessarily say if you want to, if you have a commercial space or a non-residential building, you have to have a realtor if you want to sell your place or expose your place to the marketplace. So while, I mean, I think that does cover 99% of the people, or at least the smart people, I don't think necessarily we can pass an ordinance that mandates basically if you want to market your property, you have to use a realtor. Well, the, I think another alternative <coughs> reasoning for this was is that most people these days use the internet, and that decreases the importance of the sign. And nobody's mandating you use a realtor, just that yeah. why are real estate, commercial real estate signs allowed to be twice the size of residential real estate signs, and you can't put a big advertisement placard on that side of your building for the products you're selling inside. So it just seems out of whack with everything yeah, else. Yeah, sort of what's good for the goose is what is good for the well, gander. Well, uh -huh. yes, and I also believe that the committee was uh, partially deferring this until we come back with the commercial speech issues. If we find that we still have authority to regulate commercial speech differently, then we could have a bigger sign without on a commercial property without the risk of that being used for something other than sale, lease, mm -hmm. rent. So when you go to 12 square feet, it means that you can have a perpetual sign with any content of 12 square feet on a commercial property. Okay. I, I, I totally understand that, but I don't think that the, the constitutional question that's been raised here in the Supreme Court is ruled on should in any way limit the Businesses' ability to be able to put that sign up simply because we can't figure out how to deal with the content issue. I mean, if this is what's been allowed, I still haven't heard a good argument about why it should change. I'm more than happy to engage in a full conversation about that, but I think folks like Krista and I are going to want to go back and talk to our members and get a lot more information about what that's going to mean to us if we're cutting this that size sign in half. When I didn't come here, I mean, as I said at the outset of this several months ago. If we're really opening this up, I got a bunch of things I'd love to bring to the table that many of you aren't going to like. So I would suggest we stick with our purpose and not look at either expansion or contraction of what the existing rules are. So let me get a poll if I could. How many people would prefer to go the way around that Ken is talking about or to switch to six and or to 12 rather really, and, and, and have, uh, see what the repercussions are and 
you know, what your clientele says is the same as yours. So, what's the choice? The, cho <laughs> <laughs> the choice is reduce it to uh, 12, reduce it to six, six. Re reduce six. it to six, or, or leave it as it is. So, so, can you rephrase maybe if we deal with this number, then we're going to be dealing with every single one of them discussing size? We I could. think his comment was let's deal with the content issues and focus on that and and let everything else ride yeah. size high quantity etc cetera, etc cetera. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so then that we just true. deal with the with the content i thought that was what this is all about and yeah. i think we are getting kind of in, involved in that. Yeah, I, I, I think we we've, we've, we've got some feel, about the, things that we don't need that. to yeah. I, I thank agree. you for i have a question bringing though. it to mm -hmm. end our sign ordinance uh, for commercial mm -hmm. signage on buildings uh, limits the size of the sign you know, with a formula regard with regard to the frontage foot front foot Foot lineage lineage feet. Feet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of, of the of the building of the property, uh, so yeah. are, are we talking about a different animal here? Uh, than what we in the current regulations, it is a different animal because it's an exempt sign. Okay. So uh, okay. So yeah. you could you could merge them together, and I do want to say I suspect that where I'm going to come out on commercial speech is that you can still regulate it differently so that you can have some kind of content limitation on the sign. So if you want to go to 12 feet, great. Either way, I, I don't see any way to avoid coming back and looking at the commercial speech rules that have survived the Gilbert case to see where you can control the the, the content. So, let me, just so that I can clarify, when you say commercial speech, you're talking about speech on a commercial property, not commercial speech, because no, that's I'm what Gilbert did, was actually regular. No, I'm talking speech. about speech that uh, proposes a commercial transaction. Oh, I see. Okay. Generally speaking. Okay. Yeah. And that, that, that since the 70s, early 70s, the Supreme Court has said that commercial speech doesn't have as much protection as non commercial. We are all guessing whether that survived Gilbert. Most uh, folks thinks, think that it does. Uh, certainly the Ninth Circuit here thinks that it does. Uh, that doesn't necessarily give me comfort, though, because the Ninth Circuit was the court that got reversed in, in, in Gilbert. So we're going to be guessing. And the safe bet will be, of course, to assume that we can't regulate commercial speech any differently. That's the you know, the First Amendment purist conservative route. But I'm suspecting that the advice we're going to give will allow you some flexibility on speech that proposes a commercial transaction. So let's move this forward. I'm persuaded by your argument. Um, and so I guess I'd ask a show of hands who would agree with what Ken is saying, which is leave it as it is. We're just supposed to be worried about conforming to not, not rewriting re all the rules, just making this consistent with the Supreme Court. Before you take that poll, I'd like to add something more to it. I, mean, I am just really conflicted on this because uh, in all my years on the sign committee, that's the one thing that, that burns me a lot, is all the effort we go to make the city look beautiful and then these big four foot by three foot uh, um, pieces of plywood get tacked up high up on a building covering architectural features and why do we allow that? So if this is the only opportunity we're going to have to do this, uh, I, I would kind of like to address it. Um, if we can have a crack at this another time and keep things separate, that's a, a possibility. Um, I don't know that there are that many things in here that we need to address where we're scaling it back by a factor of 50%. Uh, so, you know, it seems like maybe with this six square feet thing we've... Uh, covered a lot of what we need to address, and there are just a few things like this uh, 12 square feet for commercial real estate. Well, in response to that, I would say we're not supplanting the sign committee. Ours is a different function. It's to make things consistent constitutionally. These yeah. Are period. But these are exempt signs that the sign committee has nothing yeah, to do with. Yeah, we have no purpose except to report, you know, signs that don't conform to these standards as violations and then wait two years until they're enforced. I still think we need a poll here to figure out where we're going. Uh, could I ask a show of hands for those that agree with Ken 
Can I ask one more question? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not right now. Look, let's just get this hands up thing. Well, if I count one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, well, that, that carries, I think. Who's not, who's not voting? A bunch of people are here. I, I, I didn't yeah, I'm sorry, was there, was there, I didn't, I didn't ask for any names. Uh, I didn't vote. Uh, I'm, I'm concerned, I, I agree with Steve that this issue needs to be addressed sometime in the future. Okay. And I hope not before I, I die. I think if you had a second <laughs> uh, call for hands, that would be something we'd all like to see, is a second pass on the, on the size and number of signs and so forth. I mean, I, I, I do just agree that we're focused on content and we're going, we're going astray when we start to look at size. Mm -hmm. uh, you're absolutely right there. But I do also agree that the, you know. Would it make sense when we get all this done to come back and take, try to take a crack at the issues that we're bringing up here? It's like the ones where people are a little bit doubtful. Answer yes. At least we can move yes. forward. Yeah, yeah. that is practical. I, I, I think from our perspective, we'd be happy to do that, but I'll guarantee you that Chris and I will need about 30 days so we can come up with the fairly sizable list of things that we'd like to see in that discussion as well. So. I'm sure you would. <laughs> I'm a member of your organization. Yep. We don't necessarily agree. Next. Okay, so uh, 12 uh, square feet for now, and uh, You'll look at that again when we come back for final run through, informed by my advice on commercial speech. Okay, next, um, no trespassing. The current regulation allows uh, signs one square foot in size at each corner and entrance to the property and at intervals of 50 feet, not less than 50 feet. So it allows for a, a, an indefinite number of signs depending on the size of the property. You decided to allow one additional six square foot sign posting no trespassing. Six square one additional one square foot? No, I, well I had, uh, I have uh, six in my notes. Sign. Six square feet or six signs? Six square, square feet, feet is what I took down, yeah. Uh, maybe I may have been wrong, or you so can change it. So I have down here that the one square foot would be part of a six foot base. So you could have six one square foot signs or one six square foot sign, but it is part of this base thing. Uh, well, if I got it wrong, I'm happy to fix it. Six I total square feet. How many of the I, signs? I, I think that's what we decided. Okay, and up to six signs. All right. Uh, a question. I mean, is there a legal requirement? If you're going to conduct a or call the police and say someone is trespassing, is there a yes requirement? Yes. Do we know what that requirement is? I don't off the top. I'll come back on that. I don't believe it's every 50 feet. I, I believe it's substantially uh, a substantially larger distance than that, but I will come back with that. I, I would think that our ordinance would need to allow support, for. allow for police to actually, I mean, Police to enforce no the trespassing law. No As, assuming the state law is constitutional. No. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't, you know, that's, that might be a stretch. Another can of worms. Okay, so I'll, I'll report back on whether state law requires any different posting than what you've concluded. Okay, uh, next page residential identification. The committee concluded that there was a compelling safety interest for emergency response and that the current ordinance allowing a one square foot identification sign on a residence should be continued uh, designating the residential address that's content but that's okay because there's a compelling government interest here and my parenthetical was a question of uh, do we apply that to businesses in addition to residences and Jaime you might fill in the gaps on my knowledge about how we deal with identification signs for businesses currently. Same thing, same thing. I think if the fire department <coughs> mandates certain type of identification, then it, it defaults to that requirement. I think they've done that for mixed use development. So they they, they're, they're identical? Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, next was uh, uh, directional signs in um, private lots and or public parking lots for that matter. Um, Where is this? This is the no, second to last on page two. Of, it's on the memo. 
It, it would be uh, B11. B11. So the big table shows the existing rule, uh, two square feet, three maximum per lot, or one per entrance. And I have that you carried that forward on the theory that uh, that kind of size in a parking lot, that kind of sign in a parking lot was unlikely to be used for any particular purpose that would be harmful. Is there a safety issue involved here? Uh, we debated that. The committee debated that. And um, I have my notes actually say compelling interest, no compelling interest. So I don't remember whether you concluded on that. What would one of these signs be? What would be an example of one of these signs? No um, unauthorized parking. What is it? No unauthorized parking or parking for a certain address only. Yeah. It could be a directional sign. Yeah. In and out. So that's a safety matter. Um, we can make that argument. It's not a reach. If you and and so you could limit the content. The uh, current code does not define traffic directional sign, if I remember correctly. So it it is kind of one of those we'll know it when we see it. So um, if you want to just keep what's there, I'll write it with a compelling interest finding. And it's vehicle and pedestrian safety is what the code currently references. It says, it, the code also restricts the colors. It says black letters on a white or building color background and limited to guidance of pedestrian or vehicular traffic within the premises. So exit, you know, picture an exit sign in one of the lots. One way or whatever. Right. Public and private. Correct. So does this also apply to signs that say parking only for certain addresses? I mean. I don't know if that's traffic directional. Yeah, um, it doesn't seem directional to me, but is, is the, are those signs covered elsewhere? Well, it depends on the letter height. So we've had a, a, a um, signage program proposed for large developments that incorporates flow and, and wayfinding. And we usually make a decision on the size and the letter height as to whether they're exempt. Um, and so we'll have a combination of, we figure, traffic signs and additional directional uh, wayfinding signs that aren't considered exempt. I hate to bring this up, but how about a sign that says, you know, for Joe Smith Company only? Does that come right. under this? Or handicapped parking, expectant mother parking, elderly parking. But those are government or mandated yeah, those signs. Well, one is. Exactly. The handicapped is. The rest aren't. And you go to grocery stores sometimes now, and they'll have oh, a sign. Reserve, they'll have a, yeah, reserve for expected mothers, reserve for, and they got them a little pole in front of the space. Like so remember, the, the, the current exactly. law limits you to three signs. And so there's not a lot of room to misuse those. Uh, so, you know, people are going to use them as directional signs because they only get three. Without reference to the size of the parking lot as well? No reference to size in the current exemption. I believe you can get a permit for other signage, I mean. That's correct. Oh, and how would that work? You, you proposed all your directional signage beyond those exemptions as part of your program. And then it usually works itself out if you can justify the need to direct folks around the facility or the parking areas. Okay, and we, the city can retain permitting authority as long as we find that compelling government interest and safety. Okay. How are those little curb things with somebody's name affected by this? You know, presidents only or whatever. Yeah, we usually don't regu regulate those. Employee in a month. Okay. Yeah. We're stenciled on the asphalt yeah. itself. Yeah. yeah, we don't. Okay. So stay out of that then. Are we ready to move on? Then? Almost. Uh, yes. Okay. You know, so. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. And I, I do apologize for wasting all of your time since I was late and I wasn't here the last time. I, I just want to make sure I understand that. So, so what what we're saying is, on private property, if you have a two-acre parking lot, you can only put up three signs? No, you can have apply for more, but they, you limit until you, you get three exempt okay. signs. Exempt and if you signs. want more, then you ask the city. And, and 
Okay. Correct timing, is that what we're That's saying? That's correct. <laughs> and and why, why would a private property owner have to go to the city to say, I want to put six signs on my three acre parking lot? Because the city regulates signage <laughs> on private property. I, I think there, there needs to be, uh, I'm not trying to create more of an issue, but I, I think what we have here is overly restrictive without reference to use or without uh, size or capacity. Um, well, it, it goes both ways. We just said we're not here to change the work. Exactly. So yeah. now yeah. you're implying that you want to liberalize it. No, it's got to go both ways. It's got to go both ways. You've got a big lot at the news press. Is there a problem there, for instance? You know? Well, it needs to be paid. That's <laughs> 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 well, we can't club. help you with that one. Time. The club. <clears throat> well, you know, let me offer a kind of liberalizing comment. I think it's impossible to deal with the content rules changes without looking at, in some way, at the existing policies. So your charge wasn't limited to robotically applying the law to what you have now. So while I respect your restraint, that that's not mandatory, nor will it necessarily be possible in some areas. So because of the inability to regulate content, you might need to relook at how we've handled it. Well, but in that, that sense, that's that's our, I think that, yeah. that that's sort of implied. If in order to Correct. in order to do the work we've been asked to do, we have to make a change, then we make that change. But in Correct. a place where, even though I might agree, if, if this is, if we can do what's currently on the books and do it in a way that meets the new constitutional requirement, I think it's better for us to do that and not open up that uh, can of worms. That's as, within as your Jaime discretion. Said, as far there, as is, there is a procedure for getting more signage apply for it, you go through the process, the sign committee reviews it, and if you're allowed what is negotiated. Yeah, and I, a private lot, as you referred to it, is going to be a business. Yeah, it's not just somebody's home that has a big parking lot on it. <laughs> and so they're going to be in for permits for other signage as well, most likely. So it's not really well, I mean, uh, it, in it, position it, on it. It could be like Ealing's Park, which is a, a privately owned location that has a lot of parking. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just, I, again, I, 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 I don't see where we always have to run to uh, the city to get permission to put a fourth sign on a like Ealing's, yeah, on an Ealing's parking lot. Well, is you there draw a the line somewhere. It could be relative to lot size or parking lot or number of stalls or something like that, but. Uh, Ariel, is there a safety issue here? It seems to me there is when you get to directional signage in a parking lot. But you still yeah, have my the opportunity to get more signs. You just need a permit for them. We, we did that with the Castor Center. You know, they they came to us for a pretty expanded signage thing. We it was all uh, you know well presented and it was all you know correct. We Is it costly for uh, to get uh, the additional permits? I don't know. Uh, I I wouldn't think it's costly. I I think it's uh, it might be considered burdensome on some parts because. Uh, like um, Mr. Gurry says, uh, when you revamp a, a facility, we've had Sansom come in, we've had Cancer Center come in, there's an assortment of directional signage now associated with the big site, and so there will be more likely more than three, and, but we have not had mo 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 problems associated with directional signage traffic, we, we have um, also transportation review them also for the safety purposes, to make sure people are not getting confused. Uh, so it doesn't uh, turn into a, a problem reviewing. It's more just documenting what's proposed. It, it, maybe I'm wrong here, but it seems to me the, the, the professional experience of the city could be advantageous to uh, a private party because they know the safety stuff more. Right? I mean, Don, you still unhappy down there? Well, I, I am only from the standpoint, while I, I, I trust practically everyone in this room, that might not be always the case. And uh, it, since, since, it, since, it, since it becomes be subjective, it just depends uh, what day of the week it is sometimes. Um, so, um, so how would you do this? Well, I, I would, I know this might come be a shock coming from the news press, I would be far more liberal in my thinking as it relates to what we would allow especially on private property, especially when the uh, benefit of the, the parking user uh, can be enhanced, uh, be it, uh, well, again, I, I know we're trying to avoid 
uh, specific content. The, the, the problem with that, and we see it now, is that directional science turns into branding, and you have logos and um, identification of, of that sign being associated with the business. So you, all of a sudden you see Sansom, 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 or the brand all over the place. So yeah. there is a judgment on repetitive nature of yeah. whether you need the actual logo associated with the directional science. Yeah. Could I suggest that we leave this as is and make it one of the ones that we come back and take a, a take second look at? Maybe Don will add some additional thoughts by that. Yes, the only change I'm hearing, uh, Councilmember Hotchkiss, is that we will treat it as a compelling safety interest so that the city's permitting authority uh, and your flexibility to specify content will will remain. Well, I agree with that. Do others? I mean, it's yes. 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 I, 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 I agree with that. Okay. Now, the last one from last time is informational commercial. What are those? They are lettering not exceeding two inches in height or neon or LEDs that say open that identify whether the business is open or closed, credit information, emergency address and telephone numbers, uh, and, and emergency address and telephone numbers. So that's the visas, visa logo on the front door and the hours of operation and the, the phone and that kind of thing. The current regulations allow one and a half square feet at each public entrance with a total limit of five square feet. My notes from last time show that uh, you essentially left it as it was on the theory that uh, no one is likely to use a one and a half square foot sign on the door uh, for any harmful purpose that would create visual clutter or other kinds of problems associated with signs. So regardless of content, you thought that was an okay thing to leave alone. On my notes, I crossed out five and put two square feet total. So is anybody yeah, else at entrance? Yeah. That's yes. what I have. What I, yes. I, I have that in my memo too. <laughs> two square feet at entrance was my note. So that was meant to eliminate the five? Yeah, apparently. But so is, the, is I mean, it doesn't make any sense to have one and a half square feet each or two feet total. I mean, hardly any difference between those. So I'm not clear, really, from my notes on, on what it is we resolved. So is it? I think two it was feet two, total. Or I, I, the, I believe the best I can tell from my notes is it was two square feet at the entrance only. And some businesses have multiple entrances. Right. Be okay. Have two square feet at each entrance. Mm -hmm. I'm confused with regard to the not allowed on ETV unless 10 feet back. I mean, that would apply to neon. Yeah. Or so more does it? Yeah. But the informational signage 10 feet back, yeah. limited to small letters, two square feet, difficult to read. I think maybe the way this got translated from the actual text of the sign ordinance into this matrix maybe is Something where it fell apart there. and doesn't quite make the, sense. The, the, the EPV restriction is with respect to neon or LEDs okay. in, in the ordinance. So I, it's convoluted the way I wrote it down, but that's that's what I meant. Okay, thank you. So where do we stand on our elements then? A two square foot sign at any entrance, which is bigger than the current one and a half, and uh, neon LED. Uh, that's an EPV thing. Well, yeah, and the, the difficulty there is we have a content restriction and that neon LEDs are limited to open or closed. Uh, it's hard to imagine that being a big content issue. I mean, I can, I can imagine uh, certainly a substantial government interest in letting people know whether a business is open or not. This is cast as an exception to the general rule for bidding neon signs, right, I mean? That's correct. It's, it's an exception. So I, this is kind of accounting for those Costco liquor store open signs, you know? And I don't know how else to describe them. Well, how about for a Budweiser sign, you say? 
deal with that? Because that's, you know, you see those in windows. The, this oh, rule allows only the text open. <coughs> well, we can't limit it to that, can we? I, I don't think you really can, but again, um, but is this something that we can wait on until you see about the whole commercial speech thing? I don't. May, I don't think so, Chris, because so. because it's not likely to be commercial speech. Yeah. yeah. So this uh, this probably turns into uh, you know, Pabst Blue Ribbon on Tap. Yeah. Neon. But if you have two square feet of that, then you don't have room left for your open, Anything else? open or closed sign. You only get the two square feet, right? And if you have multiple entrances, you still have just two square feet? Per, per, per entrance. entrance. Per entrance. Per, per entrance. Yeah. Well, the, 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 the current regulation uh, limits the overall height to 12 inches and limits the neon lettering to six inches. So it's a, it's, much smaller than two square feet mm -hmm. currently. How do you currently measure um, letters stenciled on windows? You box it around. You box just around the okay. window. Yeah. Letter. All right, where do we stand on this? I'm well, a little confused. Uh, it, last time it looks like rather than capping the total at five square feet and limiting each to one and a half, you authorized two square feet at each entrance. Okay. We can regulate neon or LED differently than other signs because it doesn't bear on content. So uh, my suggestion would be to use a smaller number and quantity for neon or LED uh, in the hopes that people would then reserve that for open or closed. That makes sense. Would that, would that also go for each entrance? If you have a, three entrances to a to a business, that the open close sign for for each entrance. The current law allows no more than one sign right. per business, no more than one right. LED or neon. So that's what we would. Is stick that with what that. you want? No. Mm, yes. I'd like more, but I'm willing to live with that. Okay. So six inch letter height on the neon. Is that mm -hmm. Okay. And twelve inch yeah. uh, height of sign. Matt. Yeah. Same. Same. Carry over the current size limit. Because I believe that came from a review of signs that you could buy at places like Costco. So we kind of tailored that to fit what people were buying and putting in their windows because it was a lost cause to try and ban these things. So what is the sign that is not allowed in EBV unless it's 10 feet back? That's the neon LED okay. sign. And uh, like I say, I should have... The sentence is backwards. Yeah. So if you have an open sign and you want it in your window, it just cannot be a lighted sign. Okay, uh, we're done with the May 18th meeting. <laughs> and that's time to go. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we are up to, wow, the second page. <laughs> That's good. This is hard. I, I, you know, this is, I commend all of you. This is really hard stuff. Okay. And, oh, let's see, I've got the law. Again. All right. So the current law with respect to civic events says any civic event sign except a banner the sign shall be removed within 24 hours after the time of the event and shall not exceed 24 square feet in size and may be erected for a period not to exceed five days out of any 30, only one per lot. And the civic event sign is defined as a sign other than a commercial sign posted to advertise or provide direction to a civic event sponsored by a public agency, the city, a school, church, fraternal organization, or similar non-commercial organization. So the definition of civic event is problematic in that it limits what kind of speaker can uh, a advertise its event. It um, includes churches and schools, but it excludes, for example, um, uh, 
you know, what is a similar non-commercial organization? How are we going to react to the 24 square foot sign for the cross burning rally, uh, five days of every 30? So that's that's the kind of problem. My my suggestion is that um, the real problem here is with it um, sussing out what kind of events would have a additional sign allowed, and you can control the time that a sign is posted, the, the duration of the posting, uh, when during the calendar year or week or day that sign is allowed, and uh, this would essentially then be uh, an additional allowance for a temporary event. And uh, the, the, probably the, the, the uh, cautious way to go would be to tighten that regulation up because the 24 square feet presumed uh, a church or a school or some sort of what I guess people thought was kind of a benign pro-community event. Uh, whereas uh, if it can be used for any content, you may, wanna, uh, may want to tighten it up. And so why wouldn't somebody argue that an election is a civic event, so I'm going to devote 24 square feet to an, uh, promoting a candidate? You, you are absolutely right. The definition of civic event is constitutionally infirm. Mm -hmm. Constitutionally what? Infirm. So, so the category defensible. changes to temporary event sign. I think. Right. I so think. that's what we need to define. Does this include Earl Warren, the showgrounds, or is that county? They're exactly They're state. state. It's a separate okay. entity. It's an agricultural okay. association. W would, this, would this apply to, um, let's say, um, uh, you know, when we used to close uh, Cabrillo on that one Saturday for the, the everyone bike along Cabrillo thing, and would the signs at that event be covered by this? Or would that be separate under whatever permit they got to hold that event? You could limit the signage to city permitted <clears throat> events. This is what I'm thinking, because I'm not, unless someone else has another thought on this, I can't think of anyone who's advertising upcoming events using big posters anymore. I mean, you know, we used to do that over State Street, but I, no one really does that anymore. It's really the stuff that you have at the event itself, and for well, the most part, we're getting permits to do that now. So they got just the, they got do they put them over on Milpas? Yeah, yeah. But is that is that a, is it a city function? Do you have to get city permission? Uh, to to raise your those, money. those were uh, granted by special exempt exemption to allow them to be flown for two events: the Christmas parade and the. Halloween. Halloween events. And and banners are excluded from this exemption. Oh, so. Uh, but city college uh, soccer games or sporting events, mm -hmm. city college, mm -hmm. UCSB, is that a civic event? It's quasi public? Well, we don't regulate city college. So then we get courtesy review there, but not. Same for the school district? or say, say School districts aren't subject to our review unless it's a landmark. They have an exemption for anything related to educational purposes. And the courts have gone so far as to treat lighting over a stadium as an educational purpose. So it's a very broad exemption from our control, city when, control. When you said tighten it up, what were you thinking of? Well, uh, these are big signs for a long time. And because of the content restriction that you currently have, they're unlikely to be abused. Take away the content restriction, I think there's a lot of potential for, for overuse. It, it, rather than, I don't mean abuse, overuse of that kind of signage. So it would be the temporary event is, it's Saturday and my business is open. I, I mean, like I said, unless someone else has got a good argument, I'm happy to listen to it, but I have no problem with just scratching this all together. With what? Just getting rid of it all together. With not exempting such signs. So you, you wouldn't regulate this at all? No, I would completely regulate it. I would just say you can't do it. Because ostensibly, I mean, right now, with, with the stuff that we just did back in the first page, you could put a, a six-foot sign on a property advertising whatever this temporary event is because of the way that we've set this up where we're not regulating the content. 
So there is a way you can advertise this, just not a 24 square foot sign, which we're not going to be able to deal with the content on. So therefore, people are going to find ways to do that and get around whatever limitations we can put onto it. Well, I think as you mentioned, the other possibility would be to allow a 24 square foot sign for events that are permitted by the city or issued in a Well, but I think even at that point, when you're getting your permit, you essentially have, to use my example, you've got control of Cabrillo. So within that permit, you could simply say, you know, you can have whatever signs you want within the area that you control during the hours that you control it and just leave it at that. And then we don't have to actually have a, a size on it. If they want to have an event there and put 80 square feet of signs up, let them do it because it's only during the time they have the event and they all have to come down. So that's so, subject to mm. review and approval with regard to numbers and sizes. So, so if you're- it's a permitted sign, correct? Is that what you're- Well, I mean, I think even for an event, you can go through and actually permit the individual signs no. in an event area. Do you just permit the ability to do the event and they can do what they want during that time? So what category, if you're a church and you put up a sign, come celebrate Easter at St. Raphael's right. or a church in the city, um, what, what code would that fall under? Okay, uh, currently, based on what you've guided, that would be a non-commercial base, non-residential of six square feet double-faced, reduced from current 24 square feet. Well, what are examples then of civic event signs? I'm not totally clear on that, I guess. Okay, the definition again is yeah. a non-commercial sign posted to advertise, which is a strange coupling. So mm -hmm. it's non-commercial, but it's advertising. It's promoting something. Well, yeah, it's yeah promoting. or providing direction to a civic event sponsored by a public agency, the city, a school, church, civic fraternal organization, or similar non-commercial organization. Like bike mania, for instance? Right, right. Uh, I drove past a State Street mile sign today on State Street, uh -huh. State, whatever. But what so about the Imadonari sign? I mean, it's a commercial enterprise, even so we're going to see the paintings. Right, I, they would probably argue that they are a non-commercial, yeah, they're, they're a church, they're a non certainly. Yeah. It's a non-profit. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it's at least a, using the church property, so that's how they would. Well, it's a civic event also because you can anybody can go free. You, uh, so Imadnari doesn't have any kind of permit from the city to hold their event. Okay. I think the, the, the idea was to envision to allow these temporary events to occur in parks and city beaches, and we've got exceptions for that. The parks have gotten approval for events like that that define specific types of allowances. I mean, it seems like it'd be pretty simple if you just tacked onto this for which a permit is issued by the city to hold this event or something. But it doesn't sound like that necessarily applies to a lot of different it things. It does not currently, Yeah. right. And Jaime, how do you regulate the materials out of which these signs can be made? Um, well, we don't really. I Other mean, once no they're banners. exempt, um, other than the banner restriction, we, we, we don't regulate it. Uh, the fact that they're temporary, the, the idea is that typically they are paper, paper and vinyl. We do get illegal banners for events. That's just the reality. But given the, the cycle of enforcement, they typically come down by the time they yeah. the events over. I, I'm, what I'm raising it because I, you don't have to have a lot of imagination to picture a dangerous 24 square foot sign. So somebody gets out the skill saw and some plywood. Half inch yeah. ply. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's almost a full sheet of plywood. And nails it up six. on the side of a building and falls on somebody's head. So, so you could get it that by materials yeah, too. That would restrict it. The, the material itself would call it be more temporary in nature. If we adopted what Ken was saying, just took this out and don't allow any of them, but then the city would still have control because that to permit everything that's basically Right, you done. could conceivably have more oversight of these temporary events by having them have to come to the city now. If they don't fall under the six foot limit. If they want more than they'd have to come and say, you gotta come to the city to get approval for that. Um, that's actually a good thing because you know I, I think that the code is really silent with a lot of respect to temporary signage. 
and that there should be some provision to allow temporary signage. Um, I like the idea of moving it into city's permitting process yeah. or events. So well, could not be that? exempt. Taking it out of here. Do it, would not be exempt. it would not be exempt. It would just be removed from here. You get be six mentioned. square feet, but everything else would... Uh, yeah, you get six square six, feet. Are you talking about which one are you talking about now? The first one. C civic, civic events? Mm -hmm. One could use their base allowance for any purpose. So they right could purpose. use the base allowance for civic event. Yeah. If they wanted more, then they go through the permit process. Yeah, that seems fair. So can I see who's in favor of Getting this rid of this. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And who's not? Okay, one, three, and then part of the second part of that is reverting to the city's permitting process. I would, I would write that in there. Okay, that's a little tricky uh, for a couple of reasons. One, Looking at the kinds of organizations that are described in the definition of civic event sign, yeah. those are organizations that uh, probably have neither the time or wherewithal to figure out the permit process before they have the bake sale on Sunday before Sunday school. Yeah, but if they're doing a 24 square foot sign for the bake sale before Sunday school, <laughs> that's the thing is it's the size here. No, no one's doing that. You could allow a larger sign subject to health and safety review uh, if you wanted. So you could allow... Larger than the six foot. Sorry. Yeah, you could say, you know, larger signs uh, may be permitted subject to review by staff or safety or whatever you wanted to describe. Is, no, isn't that basically what happens now anyway when they come for permits? Uh, location is reviewed. Transportation gets involved in, in ingress, egress, and um, depending on the size, we do look at attachments and making sure it's not dangerous. That's in the event permitting process? Yeah. Okay. And how, how long does that process take? <laughs> there, there is a, a rapid review, which is a conforming review that happens weekly. And then there's a sign committee review that will happen every two weeks. So some of these could be approved on conforming. Week, very Don, you're worried about somebody doing an event this weekend and won't have a chance to. Yeah. Well, if I mean, if you're going finally going to the city to sign permit the week of your event, you sort of get what you deserve at that point. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think it's, it's I think up for the weekend, then it's gone. There, there is, as Jaime said, the cycle of enforcement doesn't. Well, yet. there's that too. Yeah. Hold on a I, second. I, I value the, what the city does and its oversight on so many levels, but it, it gets to a point where a city reviews such many things that it takes away from the important, com the vital issues that I think is it deserves the expertise of what we have here in the city. What, what I like about the civic events as we have it, it provides some flexibility for organizations that don't have to go through the overburdensome process of always having to go to the city to put up a banner. Well, not a banner because th those are exempt. Or a some type of signage for their bazaar sale that they do once a year. And it's a group of 70, or 70 80 year old that volunteers that uh, come help whatever this paternal or uh, organization is. Uh, I, I think we need to build some flexibility in, into that. And the six square foot sign is not flexible enough? Um, a six foot sign, no, I think it, I think it should be bigger. So how would you propose writing it to meet our constitutional issues so that others wouldn't get involved in doing it then? Yeah, I think uh, that, that that is the issue. So one, <laughs> that is the issue. One, one possible way would be to give everybody a limited right to a temporary sign made out of paper or cardboard, and it would be for 24 hours per year. Any, so you get an allowance for a, a temporary event, and you can put up an extra sign without a permit, but it's a once a year thing, so that the comic book store on Anapamu doesn't post the intersection every weekend with, with temporary event signs. Also, you can uh, as associate a, an event with an annual approval, and so once you get the event approved, uh, for the first time, That's if you keep forever. you forever and you have that approval. 
I guess I, city I, department I, permits events. Planning department? Planning or, if it involves it street closures, the yeah. transportation gets involved, Police involves, department. involves yeah. Uh, yeah. And parking lots. We're right about mm, two thirds of the way through rewriting the park permitting event rules to meet constitutional standards. Mm. Uh, the concerns there being big assemblies, you know, that, uh, that, uh, that use up a lot of space. Just, just one thought, 24 hours seems to be too restrictive. If you're gonna do an event, you wanna do it a little bit in advance, a day or two in advance, and the day of, so 72 hours. Maybe. Pick a number. I mean, that's, it, we could put that down as a, as a starting point for further consideration, but. Uh, uh, seems we're getting closer here, let's do that. 72 hours once, one occasion per year. Yeah. I mean, if that's the, the will of the group, I'm happy to do that. In order to try and meet this, that's fine. Okay, so well, we're leaving this in. Can we put that down as a, with an asterisk? We come back and we'll, t we'll take another look at that. Can't how about on everything? How about that? How, <laughs> can't do that on everything. How, no, right. how about if I record that you describe two alternatives? One would be an altogether prohibition, the other would be a single 72 hour per year allowance. How many square feet? With the materials you were talking about. 24, once a year? That's a four by six size. It's pretty I, I think so. Yeah, Sounds reasonable. Okay, alternatives. In the materials part. I know that there was an eight to one vote on that first one. <laughs> <laughs> Our friend from the paper is very persuasive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next. On-site temporary open house. Now this is where we start to get into fun because we're carving into the real estate <coughs> signs again. Um, the current law allows, in addition to the transactional real estate sign, an open house sign on premises that contains only the address of the property and the name of the agent or brokerage or party holding the open house. And um, Which is weird because almost none of those signs have the address, they just have an arrow pointing you toward the open house. Right. So. On site, if they're on premises, it is three square feet or less, four feet high. And let's not get to offsite until we get there. <laughs> Maybe double face, uh, erected and removed on the day the open house is held. Correct. So the issue is, if this is allowed, then anybody can put up a temporary sign so or, you for a one day event. Wait a minute. We can go back to the one we just did, though. The event that thing that we just put together could work so for this as well. Except it's not a civic event. Except, except it's we didn't say civic event. We just said event. Didn't we? Except it's only for open houses. But that's that's giving special treatment. And my understanding is, if we allow that, then we have to allow anybody to have that. Kind of no, sign. but I think I think Ken is saying that the temporary sign that started to be purposed for civic events uh -huh. could also serve as a temporary open house sign. Uh, then you get into the 72 hours a year problem, though. Oh, you give it too much time. Yeah, yeah. would that be per property, or would that be per agent? Would that be per property? property? I mean, if we did it based on the one we just did, the temporary event one, it would be per property, yeah. Mm -hmm. As it sits, what is the problem as, as presented here? It's content. The, the, it controls the content. So the, the, the one of the ways uh, that we discussed early on as a means of dealing with real estate signs would be to restrict them to certain days of the week uh, on the theory that uh, the typical real estate sign, if you will, is say, uh, whenever the tour is, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. But not always. But not always. Well, they're, they're Certainly on the wrong. weekends. So you could, you could allow in on a residential property, an extra sign 
Saturday, Sunday from uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., that kind of thing. All right, what, what about just eliminating the content? You still call them open house and just get rid of the content. We don't regulate what you put on. Well, no, the other question fine. is, you know, if we are able to regulate commercial speech differently than non-commercial speech, this is proposing a transaction sale of a, of a house. So, um, you know, if we are able to regulate the content of this, there aren't going to be that many people that are going to uh, put out a sandwich board sign uh, because they love Jesus or something. So, um, you know, if, if we... Well, we're allow seeing anybody to put anything they want on, then there's going to be sales and stuff like that. But that likewise is a well, there already are speech. people use real estate signs and put something over them and say, yeah, you yeah, know, the state sale. But I mean, if we can distinguish commercial speech, then you know, the guy that's having this uh, sale at his uh, store can't put out sandwich signs on the sidewalk and stuff. So what I'd prefer you do is come up with something that is acceptable if we can't regulate commercial speech and then if we have that power we can come we'll come back and look at those areas where you may have different power uh, I think that conceptually I, I, that'll be easier to get through this rather than coming back and saying oh no none of that will work so what, what you're saying is we could uh, we could limit sandwich signs we could actually use that terminology or something similar for very specific times of the day and week, and just leave it at that. Correct. And these are we're talking now about the on on site signs. Right. We're not the off site. We're not there yet. So you could say that uh, Saturday and Sunday between yeah, eight and five, you can have an additional oh. sign, and mm -hmm. it might say garage sale. It might say might have Arabic world peace lettering or whatever those signs are currently. Well, we want to conform to what the realtors do now. They're pretty good by self-policing. Plus, they got to pick up their own size. Some do, but what, uh, sort of proliferation. I think well, we live in like you said, we'll get to the off-site ones in a minute, but on the on-site, that's I mean, how, how, you, yeah. how many times do it for an open house, when you're out, you're putting your signs out away, do you then put a different sign then? I mean, don't you just use the sales sign that's already there? You don't really need to put another, hey, this is the open no, house. Thing. Sometimes they put like an open house like in the driveway yeah. to like go through the walkway. Yeah, so you know where they are. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like kind of where to go into the property because it may not be fully defined right. or easily found. Yeah. So there, there are open house signs on the property themselves. Okay. Yeah, and it's a good point. And there are at times flag lots or deeper lots yeah. where oh, yeah, you, need you have a common driveway, so you need to go down, but then there might be additional driveways down the common driveway. Does that become a safety issue at this point? Some, okay, years ago, uh, Simi Valley regulated off-site open house signs as a traffic safety compelling interest issue. That is a possibility. It, it, it's definitely a possibility. Uh, I mean, I could argue that easily. If somebody's trying to find a house, and rather than be looking around or whatever and not paying attention to driving, these signs make it much easier to get where you want to go. Well, how does that differ from a, uh, a food truck? I'm not sure what you mean. Mean. Why can't I put up a temporary sign that says come to Quarantina and uh, uh, Coda to, to uh, Frank's taco truck? But that's an off-site sign. It sounds like you're talking about not an off-site. Well, that's, we're going to get there. I know it's we're going to get there. It's on property, though. It's not, we're not talking about public right away. We're no, talking okay. about off-site uh -huh. on another piece of property. So on-site... Saying that could be a compelling interest, could it not, for safety purposes? You know, to turn here. I no, I I think I, I really don't think we sell it as an issue. That um, you've already given them a base allowance plus uh, a base allowance, so they can identify the property. Uh, the argument against all of this is going to be. 
that uh, is j just a sham to allow additional signs, so what? That doesn't hurt anybody to allow additional signs. Uh, I, you know, if you want to reach and say that there's a traffic safety issue related to finding specific addresses, uh, okay, uh, we take a shot at it. Um, I actually think that's a, an accurate, uh, although we don't often think of it that way, but it's very helpful, you know, oh, I'm supposed to turn here. I, I would argue that, you know, they're equally hazardous because people are focused on those signs and not necessarily where they're going. If they're looking for an address, it seems to me that's really all they need. Well, it's easier to see one of these signs than an address, though. I agree. Well, and, and sometimes I know when we moved here and we were looking for a house, we would go to the house we were looking for, and they would see an open house sign for another house that we didn't know about, and we'd follow those signs together. Right. So. I, I That's the way it's supposed to work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where do we go with this, Ariel? I don't know. Uh, my advice is that for the on-site signs, you use time, duration, and day of the week to control them and size. And you know what, if I want to put up uh, my, uh, you know, God loves Assad <laughs> sign on the weekend, tough, who cares, you know? Yeah, so take, sure forget that. the content and just let people post a small temporary sign Saturdays and Sundays. That's what I would do. But we're going to have it anyway for garage sales yeah. and all that. People mm -hmm. are going to do it anyway, so. Yeah. Okay. I don't know about days of the week, because yeah, when's yeah. when Santa Barbara caravan? Well, see, that's the thing is that Santa Barbara technically caravans on Thursday. Well, uh, look, Thursday. Uh, let yeah, me uh, uh, let me Friday. argue. Yeah, uh, well, I, I think the traffic safety and the need for that uh, declines when you're talking about professionals looking at property as opposed to uh, uh, the looky loo. You know, so I would argue that the caravan could live without. But we have the public go to caravan also. So they're open houses. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's called caravan, and that's when the majority of the, you know, realtors go out to it. But they have clients that go out, too, because some clients can't make it on the weekends or whatever it is. I mean, it's basically like they have two or three open houses within that week if they're doing a caravan. <laughs> then my solution doesn't work because it would mean every day of the week with... It would. Mm -hmm. Although the, mostly they wouldn't use it, but they would want that option. Well, and if you can't regulate content, then any business that has some outdoor space behind the, the property line could have sandwich boards out there with... You could do it by time, though, because the majority of... Um, caravans and open houses are usually between what, like 10 and 2, 10 and 3? Yeah. Well, but like you, that. So, I mean, you basically have two, three hour time blocks, don't you? It's like, okay. it's like, you know, 9 to noon or, or 1 to 4, those sorts of things, aren't they? You don't really have a lot that are like 9 to noon. You have them like really in the middle of the middle day. Of the day. Um, yeah, generally 10 is the. But you could also do it maybe by time and the standpoints of like no more than five hour consecutive hours per day. That would be so one then, controlling way to so do then that way. So then that way. That would cover a lunch hour for someone every day to put that out there. To, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, couldn't we just say Thursdays 10 to 2 or what it isn't? That's what well, caravan is. Yeah, is there is. Is there a commercial caravan or is it strictly residential? These are all residential. Yeah. Okay, so that's limit one. We're talking about on-site residential. Commercial and private? But it, but it is a commercial activity. Right? No, but we're not, all, it wouldn't be allowed on State Street, for example. Oh, it would be on, you know, Olive. The residential areas. Right, that, that, so that could be restriction number one. And then you could have different right. hours of the day, weekdays and weekends, if you wanted. Ten to four. Um, when you're talking about just in residential, do you mean also like mixed use and things of that nature? Because then we're talking about, you know, like what's up at the marketplace. Yeah, I I was thinking 
uh, single and multi-family zoned residential. I didn't take into account mixed use. That that essentially covers the whole city because all of our uh, zones, uh, basically every zone allows residential, right? Except it for does. industrial. Maybe Except for industrial? industrial. Yeah, so yeah. that doesn't work because yeah. it covers the whole city yeah. then. Yeah, and I mean, with more and more mixed use projects going in, with condos above, we still need those, those signs. You got anything we could can, do with can, can we uh, expand and go back to temporary real estate uh, residential where you're allowed one sign per frontage and add a third and say for open house is allowed temporary open house so keep it in that realm no mm -hmm. you can't control it you can call it open house but you can't control what they put on it so the fact that you're giving them a residential allocation you're still opening them up to putting whatever they want. Mm -hmm. Okay. Could you do that, but do it where that temporary signing is available uh, once a week? Or once a month? Or yeah, you so you can restrict the timing and duration. But we yet again fall into the, like, when a property first goes onto the market, you usually end up having, going to caravan, and then you usually have, like, open houses on the weekend so you can have up to potentially three open houses in one week mm. so and your clients want that yeah. Sure. Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah and then if you do it per month I mean depending on how motivated the seller is you can have an open house every single weekend yeah. Yeah. why can't you put a little extra sign like they sometimes do to identify the agent that says open house Saturday and Sunday one to four on the real estate sign so allow that base sign to have a temporary, you know, those Flag little rectangular yeah. panels. As long as it still fits in the six square feet that we talked about. Or in addition. But that's, mm -hmm. but that's assuming you, you have a street front sign. Well, practically speaking, whatever we decide here, the realtors are not going to change. <laughs> They're going to put a sign out there, and, you know, it's going to say, the house is open now. I mean, that's just what's going to happen. Didn't you just say they're good at policing themselves? Well, yeah, they're policing themselves for their own benefit. <laughs> what? They're not dumb. I mean, the, the thing is, is with, you can put it on the sign, but as it was said, like, if it's, if your front door is not, like, right there, people need to be able to find the door to get into. Because there's, I mean, there's some houses where you go and you're like, uh, how do you get into this house? <laughs> like, and it turns out the entrance is like around the corner mm -hmm. because that's just the way that the house was set up. So you need to be able to have a sign to direct people to that. All right, I'll still, I'm still confused back on the last category. We're not gonna call that prior uh, exemption temporary real estate that's not the heading it's called temporary real estate the heading that we talked about b7 yeah b7 is that heading change changing that to, that definition for a lot of exemptions yeah it's just a straight up temporary sign it, it's not going to say real estate you can call it that but that's not going to affect the content I, well I, it, you know, it is directing them towards uh, that allowance, right? That allowance for for, for sale. No, uh, you no, know, it is. I understand. You're you're giving people a box to put it in, so they'll they'll understand that and use that, and that's prudent. But it, it doesn't mean that you can't put something else up there. Remember, I I I, I mentioned it earlier. We're going to have to have what's called the substitution clause in the ordinance that says any place you allow content X, you can post content uh, A through Z. So, so as a, as a, a city employee, if somebody wanted to put this sign up, I would find temporary real estate sign. Yeah. So here's how we could do it. If you hire me for for practical convenience, you'd start the section saying uh, this section is intended to accommodate 
uh, real estate transactions, although it may be used for any purpose. Okay, and that so, opens the door to allowing people to use well, that. Yeah, but they'll get, they'll the understand. The door's open anyway, I mean, the yeah. Supreme Court opened the door. It just seems like they have to look carefully to see if they want to use it, where we're trying to direct the majority of people to say, this is what you can do without a permit, and so just giving guidance on temporary real estate signs, you can do this for sale, and you can do this for open house. And if somebody wants to misuse that for some other purpose, you know, go to it. But yeah, we're not say, gonna, what is this language? Well, what does that, that mean? Actually, have anything I want in there? Yeah, someone's. I, well. I, I would suggest it, that if we're allowing a temporary sign, just add, uh, uh, allow an additional square footage on weekends during certain hours. Um, you know, that's, uh, to, to get into every possibility for the real estate business is gonna be impossible mm -hmm. without opening the door very broadly. So those are, those are really your two choices. Um, Let me ask a question, I'm trying to understand layering here. Um, so th this is just one small piece. A house is for sale, a sign goes up for sale. The house for sale has an open house. Another sign, open Saturday, one to four. Caravans, which is the multiple listing service, don't they find out about that through the industry? You don't need signs to actually say that they're having a caravan because people are all like sharks, all feeding on the on the information. They're gonna they're gonna go there without a sign. But you don't have just people who are with the caravan list that are looking at these properties. You also have the public that look at these too. So caravans During includes the, the public? Yes. It can. So the, it Sometimes can it excludes them. Though. But on weekends, it's not the, caravans. Yeah, the weekends. But my understanding was that Thursday was the sure, day that all the, yeah. that all the, the, the yeah. agents right. go to visit a house mm -hmm. and look it over and so forth. Well, but it is so even does that. the public. And the because public does it. Yeah. Wednesday, Wednesday is supposed to be Montecito, but those that are on the edge of Santa Barbara yeah. count themselves as Montecito, where in fact they're not. So I'm just pointing out the daily thing doesn't really work out. So the other, the other piece that's a little confusing to me is how does all this real estate talk pertain to the Constitution? I mean, what, what is, where, where are we with that? Is, is, is there some reason that people can't put up real estate signs because it's a violation of the Constitution? No, it's just that the if they put up those signs, then anybody can put up a temporary sign for any purpose. Saying anything. Well, what, what would happen if we just took this out? You would fall back to the base sign allowance so that if someone uh, wanted to put their property for sale, they would use those six square feet and they would change the content the day of the open house to or they could have a four square foot sign and a additional two square foot sign correct right. okay what i guess uh council member Hotchkiss, if uh, you know in terms of diminishing returns maybe this can be a study assignment for the committee to talk to your constituencies about, uh, because th 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 let's face it, uh, real estate signs are uh, desirable for the industry and desirable for a lot of consumers. Yeah. Is it, and and uh, so I, I don't think it's something we can ignore as a category. The other assignment would be to start thinking about what kind of signage we can tolerate in the public right of way, which is where the offsite signs are now. Currently, we very heavily restrict signage in the public right of way, and to my knowledge, the offsite open house signs are really the only signs we allow in the public right of way. So, in order to preserve the opportunity for the real estate sign three blocks from the open house on Sunday, we're going to open the door to everything else. Everything else, yeah. yeah. But we don't allow any of those signs in the downtown, mm -hmm. the downtown core. So and Kevin on State Street. Yeah. I've seen them. 
Well, I mean, that's kind of like everything, right? Like yeah. everyone breaks the law at something, but we specifically tell our members mm -hmm. like you are not allowed to put them in the downtown core. So um, I bet you if we didn't tell them, you'd see a lot more. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where, where, where does the downtown corridor end on State Street? It's, 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 it's uh, what, Sola? Mm -hmm. Sola down to the beach, to and then one street on each side. Chipola and Santa Two streets on this side. Two that's streets true, on that side. Yeah. One street, Because yeah. Santa Barbara to... Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I, have, I have a little pamphlet that says all this. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess that, uh, Councilman Rochkus, maybe we say realtors and chamber make a proposal and anybody else who wants to make a proposal bring it back next time. Did you work together on that? Okay. Who, Krista? Yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, she's about to give birth. When is that happening? Not until July 5th. Oh. Wait a minute. Wow. 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 I have her okay. cell number. Even in the hospital, I can call yeah, her. Yeah. yeah. Take your time. Um, Hurry. I, I think we're getting to uh, the, the fuzzy brain point here. Yeah. Uh, we've been at, uh, at 90 minutes. Um, the rest of you may still be crystal clear, but I saw. Steve House yawned a minute ago, so uh, I know that's a telling story. Guilty as charged. <laughs> yeah, right. So um, I wish we'd gotten farther, but we got somewhere. I think we need to adjourn now and set a next meeting, if that's all right with you. Yeah, what's your temperature for frequency? I'd, I'd rather do it sooner than later. Yeah. One, help, one thing is helpful is if we do it sooner, <laughs> we've got this we've fairly fresh in mind. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then. I will, uh, let's look, um, uh, today is the first, uh, I can see so what the 15th? We, uh, for sure, or, uh, yeah, the 15th the is 15th. fine. Yeah. These folks want to look at their calendars and see oh, how we're going to do it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Earmuck and stuff. Well, just have to cancel. And, uh, and Dan. Let's see. Oh, so we lose the can Irma. We lose Jenkins. Okay. All right. So the uh, the I will uh, set us up for the fifteenth. Here, here. here. Yeah. Uh, well, hopefully here. I'll yeah. send. We'll we in and we'll send out an email uh, tomorrow with the. Are we expecting that Ken and Krista will have something by then? Yes. Yeah. We'll have something by next week, so you guys have time to review it out. Hey, and honestly, the uh, the other. Of your professional colleagues must be dealing with this, so it would be. I'd I don't be. Care about them. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'd love to hear what other parts of the country are doing about this, because we're not. We're at this point, we're not the first. In I'll, September I'll shoot 15th. It out to my cohorts and right. see what Before we close, I'd like to thank you all, and I'd also like to compliment Ariel for doing a hell of a job. Uh, very good. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you.